Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast, I'll be reviewing the area of the skin called the dermis. The dermis is the thicker, deeper area of the skin and is made of dense, irregular connective tissue with abundant collagen and elastic fibers, which gives it great tensile strength, allowing it to stretch and recoil. Cell types found in the dermis include the fibroblasts, which secrete protein fibers. The suffix blast means to build or grow. Also, a type of white blood cell called a macrophage. And adipocytes, or fat cells, are found in the dermis near the subcutaneous layer. There are many diverse accessory structures in the dermis, including the hair follicles, glands, blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic vessels. The dermis is composed of two regions, a thin superficial papillary region and a thicker, deeper reticular region. The papillary region is the thinner of the two regions and is located immediately deep to the epidermis. It consists of areolar connective tissue containing collagen and elastic fibers. It contains lots of surface area due to its dermal papillae, which are small, nipple-like protrusions that connect with the lower surface of the epidermis, almost like the way jigsaw puzzle pieces connect to each other. The dermal papillae contain blood vessels called capillary loops, that nourish the cells of the region, but also the stratum basale cells of the epidermis. Different sensory receptors are also found in the papillary region. The papillae are innervated with corpuscles of touch, also called Meissner corpuscles, which are touch-sensitive nerve endings. Papillae also have free nerve endings, which are naked dendrites that are able to detect different sensations such as pain, tickle, itch, and temperature. We all know that our fingers, palms, toes, and soles are covered in a complex pattern of ridges and grooves. These lines, loops, and whirls are called epidermal ridges and are produced during the third month of fetal development as the epidermis sinks down into the dermis between the dermal papillae. This pattern is unique for everyone, even twins, and is determined in part by genetics. These ridges help maintain a strong connection between the epidermis and dermis in areas of the skin that are under intense physical stress and pressure, helping to keep these skin regions connected. The ridges also increase the surface area of the epidermis and help with our hand and feet grip by increasing the degree of friction in these areas. The ducts of the sweat glands open as sweat pores on the tops of the epidermal ridges. The combination of sweat and ridges form the fingerprints or footprints upon touch. The reticular region is the deeper, thicker part of the dermis and is connected to the subcutaneous layer. Reticular means net-like and describes the complex network of collagen fibers, elastic fibers, fibroblasts, macrophages, and adipose cells found throughout this region. The collagen fibers are bundled together to provide strong protein reinforcement that helps the skin resist stretching. The elastic fibers give the skin extensibility, meaning it can stretch, and elasticity, meaning it can return back to its original shape after stretching. Between the protein fibers of the dermis are a collection of accessory structures, including hair follicles, blood vessels and nerves, as well as various glands, such as sudoriferous or sweat glands, and sebaceous or oil glands, which are often associated with the hair follicle. The variety of the skin's coloration is due to three main pigments, melanin, hemoglobin, and carotene, which color the skin from pale yellow to reddish brown to black. 
People with dark skin have lots of melanin in their epidermis, giving their skin color a darker tone from reddish brown to black. People with lighter skin have little melanin in their epidermis, which gives their skin a pink to red coloration due to the visibility of the hemoglobin in the blood flowing through the capillaries in the dermis. We already know that the melanocytes produce melanin in the epidermis and transfer the pigment into the keratinocytes. Every individual person has roughly the same number of melanocytes, but the amount of pigment the melanocytes produce is different in different people. There is a degree of genetic inheritance involved in melanin production. Melanin can accumulate in specific areas of the skin, resulting in freckles. As a person gets older, darker, freckle-like blemishes called age or liver spots can appear, typically after age 40. These have no relation to the liver at all, and are just concentrated deposits of melanin that build up over time. A nevus, or mole, is a benign, flat, round or raised region of a large population of melanocytes that usually appears in children or teens. Melanin is produced in the melanocytes from the amino acid tyrosine using the enzyme tyrosinase. This synthesis occurs in a special type of organelle called a melanosome. Melanin production increases with increased exposure to UV radiation from the sunlight. The skin also gets darker, developing its tanned appearance. And this has, to an extent, a protective function, since melanin can absorb UV radiation. Albinism is a genetic condition where a person cannot make melanin because they cannot produce the enzyme tyrosinase. There is no melanin in the skin, hair, eyes, or fur. As a result, albinos can easily get sunburned and have vision problems. Vitiligo is a complete or partial loss of melanocytes from parts of the skin, which creates irregular patches of white spots. This may be related to an immune system problem involving the melanocytes being attacked by the body's own antibodies. Skin color can have a diagnostic value also. One can learn a lot clinically by visually examining the skin, nail beds, and gums. Cyanosis, or bluish colored skin, nail beds, or the mucous membranes, is due to inadequate oxygen exchange between the blood and the lungs, resulting in a depletion of hemoglobin. Jaundice is the result of an accumulation of bilirubin, a yellow pigment in the skin and whites of the eyes, which is often associated with liver disease. Erythema is redness of the skin as a result of dilated dermal capillaries due to injury, inflammation, allergies, infection, or through burns. The opposite of this is pallor, which is where the skin becomes pale and can result from anemia or shock. 